A happy, 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 beautiful, amazing day. Dr. Bob Rakowski here out of Houston, Texas with a mini course on performance nutrition. Little background on me. I've been in clinical practice now 30 years. I've worked with world champions from every major professional sport. So I know how to tune up every variety of athlete. Uh, and I've also worked with the other end of the spectrum. I enjoy teaching, so I've taught over 10,000 hours of continuing education seminars to doctors all over the world. And let's dive right in. So the athlete's top needs are focus, fuel, acid buffers, inflammatory control, and recovery. And let's start at the top with the brain, with focus. So Yogi Berra had this fantastic quote. He said, baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. Well, you know, he wasn't a math major, that's for sure, but he was right about the mental game. Uh, I've interviewed so many elite athletes and consistently they say that the game is at least, at least 90% mental. So when we talk about the brain, the brain is the most nutrient dependent, energy dependent, stress vulnerable, toxin vulnerable. And I show these PubMed numbers next to it and you can go to pubmed.gov and type in brain and nutrition. You'll see over 24,000 citations. Brain and energy, 41 plus thousand citations. Brain and stress, over 110,000 citations. Uh, and brain and toxins, 38,000 citations. So certainly we wanna nourish the brain, uh, energize the brain. And we do that with the body and with other things that we do. <clears throat> we wanna buffer the stress and we want to protect it from toxins and clear toxins from the brain and body. But Lanny Basham has a great book entitled With Winning in Mind. Uh, and he asked this question, you know, since high level competition is at least 90% mental, how valuable would it be to optimize brain function and chemistry? And what I can tell you is for the athletes that do it, it's the difference between a phenomenal successful career or maybe not being around very long. Daniel Amen in his TED talk, what I learned after 83,000 brain scans is you can change your brain. You can change it with good use, with good programming, with good training, with good function, uh, and certainly with good nutrition. So let's go on to, on to fuel. So the Global Nutrition Report says that malnutrition is the biggest problem, the biggest cause of death, the biggest cause of illness on the planet. Uh, fortunately, we don't have as many starving children, but we have an increasingly starved population. So it's a simple math issue. It takes 30 elements to grow healthy plants, animals, and humans. But some scientists figured out, you know, six or seven decades ago that they could grow big plants with three elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Well, you don't have to be an accounting whiz to know that if you pull 30 out for every three you put back in, uh, eventually you're going to have a problem. And the Global Nutrition Report says we have a big problem all over the world as every country is affected by malnutrition. So Hippocrates said, let thy food be thy medicine. Really good choice, but you know, what if the food isn't what it once was? Uh, and this journal, uh, Advances in Therapy, proved quite simply that food is too weak to replete depleted cells and bodies. And therefore, supplementation is advisable for everybody. So I have my own nutrition pyramid at the base is food. If God made it, it's okay. If man made it, stay away. Then we have superfoods. These are foods that have all the fabulous 50, all the vitamins, minerals, amino acids, proteins, carbohydrates, fat, fiber, and water uh, in doses that make a difference to human health. Top consensus superfood on the planet, Ganoderma lucidum, certainly my top superfood. And I use it with all of my elite athletes. Functional foods, uh, you know, you can buffer the inflammatory process, you can help the gut, you can help blood sugar regulation, you can help circulation, uh, you know, you, you can do so many different things with these functional foods, clear out heavy metals, toxic estrogens, etc. That's going to take a little bit of clinical savvy to pick the right medical food to get the fastest result, but they're available. And then we round up the pyramid with a good multivitamin, multimineral. When we talk about energy, Energy requires a lot of nutrition to make the mitochondrial electron transport chain over 20 steps each with a nutrient cofactor involved. Omega-3s with resolvins is an advancement in clinical nutrition. Probiotics, we have more bugs in our gut than we have cells in our body. Then the combinations of D3, K2, great for overall health and the athlete's and the athlete's brain. 
what should I eat? People often ask, well, I say eat real food, eat clean food, eat not too much, not too often, every color, every day in a way that honors your physiology, your genetics and your body goals, mostly plants. Why? Because plants are lower in the food chain. As we go higher in the food chain, we concentrate the nutrients, that's good, but we also concentrate the toxins and that's coming to be a big problem. So these are the dietary guidelines I use with my athletes. When we talk about acid, alkaline buffers, there was a book years ago, Alkalize or Die. And it's accurate, if you become acid, you will die. But I like the opposite, alkalize and thrive. So not much in the medical literature about the alkaline diet, but here's one reference. It shows that it improves bone density, muscle mass, protects from chronic illnesses, protective against cancer invasion and metastasis, even helps toxin excretion. And we could see that that might be pretty good for the athlete. But here's what we know. Enzymes are very uh, alkaline dependent, acid alkaline dependent, and you have to have the right pH. And if you drop off in either direction, you're gonna have a problem. And the same is true for hormones as well. So enzyme and hormones are profoundly affected. This reference says, you know, for example, it might take twice as much of the same hormone to have an equal response from the tissue when the body's pH is not right. So this is a speed graph for elite Olympic sprinters. Notice their speed begins to drop at 60 meters. So about the first three seconds is stored ATP. The next three seconds, very fast energy, creatine phosphate. Then we go to lactic acid and that's less efficient energy and uh, the acid begins to slow them down. So a fun study here, Tyson Gay uh, is the gentleman and I'm gonna start the video probably right about here. That's Tyson Gay right there. So you can just see him in the film. Check this out. Oop. Tyson Gay out very quickly. Usain Bolt trailing, trailing by a meter. Tyson Gay, Tyson Gay, is he going to make history? He does. The only way to beat Bolt is by putting pressure on him from the front. And Tyson Gay stuck to the script today and did it. How many of you out there had this? on your predictions, because I did predictions, because I did. So there's so many things that we do with our athletes and, and you know, consistently acid alkaline balance is a big one that we promote. So how fun Tyson Gay, the second fastest man of all time, beat Usain Bolt. Definitely a, a great race and a great achievement. When we start looking at inflammatory control, you know, Time Magazine calls the inflammatory process, the secret killer, the silent killer, that's if it's existing below the threshold of pain. Uh, you wanna have a little inflammation because it precedes repair, but not too much. And the causes of inflammation, trauma, toxicity, nutrient insufficiency. So we wanna minimize trauma. There's a controlled trauma with training. Toxicity, make really good clean choices, detoxify the body. And what about nutrition? Optimize the nutrition with the nutrition pyramid. When it comes to recovering right, I, you know, I tell people you gotta eat right, drink right, think right, move right, sleep right, poop right, talk right. I could put in a slide about Tom Brady and LeBron James and, and Michael Phelps, and they would all have very, very, very strict sleep and rest and recovery routines. And elite, elite athletes know that you need to do that. But this PubMed says, look, you cannot substitute for sleep with good diet, good exercise. Sleep is essential. Uh, and Anders Ericsson wrote the book, Peak, and he studied the best of the best in so many different fields. And here's what he found, the best of the best sleep, uh, 8.6 hours a night. And so if you work your brain and body harder, you need to recover your brain and body harder. Uh, and then finally, the wrap up, right? So you need focus, you need fuel, you need acid alkaline buffers, you need inflammatory control, you need recovery. But this was a very telling article. It was performance enhancing sports supplements, the role in critical care. And quite simply, what we've found is that people that are fighting for their life need the same categories of nutrient support as those people that are fighting for championships and medals. One quantum leap I had in clinical practice, and I, I learned this from Zig Ziglar. You know, Zig Ziglar, a great speaker, struggled his first handful of years. He said, my speaking career took off when I learned to tell people what they needed to hear in a way they wanted to hear it, like by telling stories. 
uh, I like to learn from greats. So ultimately, I learn to empower people to ingest the strong nutrition that they need to flourish in body, mind, and in spirit in the way they wanted to ingest it. So we have really awesome tasting shakes and coffees and teas infused with superfoods. Uh, and you know what? Dean Ornish said it best. Sustainable changes must be pleasurable. I'm all about empowering and promoting health, happiness, and success. And by the way, it's helpful uh, if you're wealthy along the way as well. If I can help you in any way, let me know. And we'll wrap up this mini course knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful.